Hello, 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 wonderful people. Wow, music decided to just come through super loudly. That's always a good start, isn't it? Um, right, we've got that balanced out again for you guys. So, hi. Uh, something that perhaps you guys were, were missing from the channel for a while. Um, we haven't done an interview on here in far, 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 far too long. Um, we're here today with some folks behind... The wonderful, yet slightly mysterious so far, uh, The Office type. Um, so, we're joined on a call. Uh, unfortunately, Amy Geek Etiquette hasn't managed to make it along. Um, I, I think possibly she's got some internet problems. But we are joined by the wonderful, wonderful Jack and Jason. Um, so, let's go to you first, Jack. Uh, if you'd like to introduce yourselves to the fine folks at home, let the guys know exactly what you do. Um, around this wonderful title, and um, yeah, give them an idea of, about you. Hi, hello, hello. Uh, I'm Jack Duffy. I'm the creator of the Office Type uh, and creative director of Epic Dot Studios. Uh, right now, I'm basically the lead writer, um, sound designer, and character designer for the Office Type. So, the, the doer of all of the things. Yes. <laughs> uh, people are saying I'm very quiet already. Yeah, that's okay. fine. That's fine. You're getting cranked up as we speak. Not a worry. Um, yeah, audio audio balancing is one of those fine arts, and I have no artistic skill whatsoever. So. <laughs> um, but you should you should be cranked up a little bit now, uh, which should hopefully uh, equal you out a little bit more. Or it might just be me that's boomingly loud. Who knows? Um, Marvellous. And uh, your fine self, Jason, uh, if you'd like to introduce yourself and let people know what you're all about. Yeah, so uh, I'm Jason LaRock. Um, some people may know me from Dream Daddy, um, the uh, the game, the big hit over the summer. Uh, I voiced Damien Bloodmarch, the goth dad, as some people know him. And uh, I'm helping to work on this project as a secret part of the cast as of right now uh, a secret but for, for not too long hopefully <laughs> yeah hopefully hopefully it's up to jack i guess uh, we'll see <laughs> it all depends on the character art <laughs> okay so I, I suppose the first thing that we really want to go through is what the hell is the office type? Because I think uh, I think some of the folks, especially from like uh, my community here, may not have heard of the office type so far. So to to give kind of a rough overview of what people can expect, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Right. So, um, of course, this is going to sound very weird to anyone who has not heard of it. Um, <laughs> but the office type is uh, an upcoming dating sim title uh, from Heavy Top Studios, an indie studio in Chicago. Um, and it's all about dating office supplies. Uh, you go through um, selecting characters from um, sets of three gender identities, um, and you have eight characters per playthrough, and you get to know them and start dating some representations of office supplies. So, <laughs> so I mean, it's not too outlandish. Because you've had like previous games that are in a in a similar sort of ballpark, I guess. Uh, I mean, I, I've streamed through on on this channel before. Um, uh, we've had Hatful Boyfriend. We've had um, was it Panzer Madals as well, um, which again are sort of these anthropomorphized, uh, weird and wonderfuls <laughs> that are turned into sort of human representations to date. So are you going with the same sort of approach? Uh, well, I can only presume you're going along with the same approach with like the humor uh, thrown in there as well, right? Yes, it's definitely a comedy romance. Okay, okay. So how did this come about for you guys? Because, um, uh, you, you know, we've, we've got like some previous involvement with uh, Dream Daddy, but where, where did this all start out for you guys? Uh, yes, it's a little bit of a complicated story. Um, but of course, that's the question that everyone always asks first. How did this idea come about? And everybody wants to know, uh, why do I want to have a relationship with office supplies? And the <laughs> answer is, I don't. Um, but the idea first came 
Um, from a combination of things. Uh, first of all, from if you've heard of the game Boyfriend Dungeon, like Kit Fox games. Mm -hmm. um, for people who don't know, in that game you're going around an isometric dungeon and when you find chests filled with weapons, they turn into dateable characters. Um, and I saw that trailer and I was like, whoa, okay, these are, you're gathering human resources. Uh -huh. Wait, human resources? That's sort of an office thing. <laughs> um, so that kind of sparked the idea of dating office supplies. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah I thought like, the office is a good um, sort of framework for comedy, um, especially with um, shows like The Office, you know? Right, right. Because uh, so we actually looked at, um, on, on our podcast, we looked at, um, uh, at that. Is, is it Boyfriend Dungeon? Is that what it's called? Yes. Um, yeah, we, we took we took a look at that one week, and like um, we, we we ended up having like this enormous debate about if you could date any weapon, what weapon it would be. So so I, I guess I pose the question to you guys: if you could date a weapon, which would it be? And if you could choose an office supply, which would it be? Uh, let's see. Weapons. I'm not, I've I've always been partial to swords. Um, I don't know how many different weapon choices we have, but probably go with a fancy sword. <laughs> and, and Jason, do you do you have a, a, a violent choice? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to be a little bit uh, out of the box here, and I'm going to say brass knuckles. Mm -hmm. Oh, up close and personal, I like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And and do you guys have like a favorite office supply? Not necessarily that's that's in the game, revealed or unrevealed. Yeah. Um, let's see, I won't I won't give too many details away. Um, but right now, um, I, I like the pen. Like not even like uh, characters from the office site, but a pen seems sophisticated. And I like that. Mm hmm. Oh, like nice fountain pen. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. No, no, not one of those nasty biros. Got it. <laughs> and for yourself, Jason. I don't know. Does a swivel chair count as office supplies? <laughs> well, easily the most fun thing in the office, right? Okay, because if a swivel chair counts as office supplies, then I'm going with a swivel chair. Just, just hours endlessly spinning. Although that could be oh, taken yeah. in slightly oh, yeah. wrong context. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so you, you guys are still in quite sort of early early days of uh, development. You've revealed odd little bits and pieces across Twitter. So to bring people up to speed, what have we seen so far from you guys? Yes, um, so uh, the office type is very early in development. Um, a lot of people don't really know what that means. Um, we are probably less than three months into development. Right. Um, from original concept, um, but so far, um, I guess I can continue with my story about how it came about. Um, uh, I was a fan of Epsi, the character artist from Cream Daddy. Mm -hmm. um, I really liked her style and uh, artwork, so I contacted her through Twitter um, and kind of proposed this idea to her. Um, and she was she seemed, she seemed excited about it, and we started working on this idea. Um, so so far, we have six um, of the uh, main characters out of twenty-four characters. Um, all their base art is completed, um, and we've released that on our Twitter. Um, but so far, other than that, um, it's in its very early stages. Gotcha. So so have you got an idea of the kind of direction you're going to follow through is it going to be kind of like an office place romance or are we going to be bringing it out into the real world have we gotten that far yet yes um so a lot of it is designed um and the reason i'm not sharing too many details right now is as it's early in development um we don't want to say such and such is going to be like this mm -hmm. and then once we go through the design process if there are changes to it we don't want to have to renege on it or anything like that um but yes, uh, the plan is for it to be sort of um, get to know people from the office um, and around the office area. But the funny part of the concept is 
um, you're taking these real office supplies to real places uh, for imaginary dates. Mm -hmm. um, so while you're having a nice time, this um, human representation of a pencil, everyone's just like looking at you and thinking, you know, like, what's, what's this person doing with this pencil? <laughs> <laughs> There's no way that pencil's going to eat that entire lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is there anything more romantic than taking your chosen office supplier to a branch of Staples? Like, is that the ultimate goal? <laughs> I mean, I guess it is. <laughs> you, you're adding to development right here. This is it. Like, it, you know, this is under the guise of an interview, but secretly it's actually a brainstorming <laughs> session and we haven't told anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right, that I could really be the do. ultimate date, you know, you take them down the aisles, <laughs> you get a job at Staples, so you can be together always, I mean, you know, feel, you know, take any of this for the standard 20%, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, well, like, I know we, we have our designs in place, but it's always very helpful to help, uh, have help from the community, see what they're interested in. So, this sort of thing is really interesting and helpful to us. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I think some of the best games are the ones that have taken the, the, the community input without kind of, you know, sort of taking community input as, as fact almost and things that have to happen, but the ones that really take that input on board and implement the best parts of them to improve the overall title. Um, you know, I, I've seen that do fantastically well in a number, number of different indie titles. Um, that you've got some folks in the chat, uh, Mad Fellows Games, who, who make another indie title at the moment and um, they're, they're constantly taking feedback on board and it's improved the game overall and it it, it, make, it makes sense to listen to your audience so I presume that's going to be like a, a sort of central part of your ethos, right? Yes, um, so uh, of course like a designer and a team has their vision for their game um, but if there's hundreds or thousands of people adding to it then I feel it can only get better. Yeah, absolutely. Crowdfunding ideas, right? That's 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 the <laughs> the perfect way to go about it. And 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 speaking of um, crowdfunding, I mean, with a project of any size, I suppose there's always um, the the concern about how you progress and how you continue to building and manage manage to fund things and so forth. So, have you guys looked down the sort of Kickstarter Indiegogo route? Is that is that something that's ever kind of appealed to you? Because I, I hear they can be like real slog fests. Um, well, we've looked into it. Um, of course, we're at too early of a stage to launch anything like that. Um, we should have more to show for it. Um, mm -hmm. Our plan, any sort of big fundraiser like that, um, we're saving until we have probably all of the characters done. Right. Because um, there are a lot more costs that we need to factor in, like background art and programming and all that. Um, so we're sort of um, looking into other options, uh, either small fundraising and or um, we've actually been approached by a couple of different companies uh, about funding the game. Well, no, oh, uh, I can't give too many details about that, but um, we're looking into it. Well, it's, it's good to hear. Like, uh, it's, I always like to see, when, when you see these good ideas crop up, and and uh, you kind of see a few of them kind of fizzle out just because they don't quite I don't know pick up somewhere. So it's nice to hear that even even at this stage, you guys are already starting to get the interest that's um, likely to keep propelling you forward and to uh, obviously eventual release and and getting things put into place. Yeah, I was actually very surprised by how much support we've gotten. Um, I think it all started from uh, a Tumblr post. Who were just uh, someone was talking about the game and things we posted on Twitter, um, and they were so excited about it. Um, and I think it got over thirty thousand notes on Tumblr. Wow! Um, very impressive, um, especially it, it was. I think it was over a few days. Um, so we got this just flood of support over Twitter, and it was amazing. Um, and like, thank you so much for your support so early. Uh, we didn't expect this. Well, I, 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 as I say, like whenever I find these sort of interesting ideas, I always like to kind of 
jump in earlier uh, to kind of get an idea of the lay of the land from that point. And then you can always catch up a little bit later on, like just kind of as you're heading up to release or so. And, and you just see this sort of large level of change and improvement and progress that's been made on the project. And it, there's, there's something almost really rewarding uh, about seeing kind of the, the progress that's been made so far. Um, so, uh, yeah, I always like to pick up these projects early just to, yeah, really, really get a look. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, it's always great to get an early look. Um, over at Heavy Thought, we're sort of in the realm of uh, we want to create something that people will immediately be really excited about. And I guess we've sort of done that. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we'd like to show you more, but all that stuff takes time. Um, but we're really happy to see people are, are as excited as we are this early in development. And, and as you say, it's only been like, uh, what, two, two, three months, something like that? Yes, the original idea started in late October of 2017. Um, and things on uh, social media didn't really start blowing up until about a week ago. It's just, uh, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of the, the idea of uh, virality, I suppose, on social media, right? Someone gets hold of it and just starts running away with it, and suddenly you've got <laughs> loads of people kind of hitting the follow button, which is fantastic. Um, so, so one one of the questions from a fellow dev in the chat actually um, uh, is asking how many people are, are on your team and what your timeline. I, I mean, obviously, uh, it's, it's going to be a little bit hazy at the moment because you've got a, a fair way to go yet. But roughly, what your timeline is looking like for for progression through production and then eventual release. Yes, uh, so we plan out a few things, um, and right now we are working with a team of about seven people. Uh, mm -hmm. There's myself as a, uh, no pun intended, a jack of all trades, um, <laughs> where I'm covering a lot of things from producing to voice acting, directing to UI art. I saw somebody in the chat talking about the overlay. Uh, I made this overlay in the background. I, um, if you if you think that I made that, you must be laughing. <laughs> like I, I can't draw a stick man. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm kind of covering a lot of roles, and then we have um, we have a concept artist who's helping to sort of expedite the design process on the characters, um, and we have FC, of course, the character artist. Um, and we have a lot of uh, non-binary writers that I'm consulting with. And mm -hmm. we have a colleague who's working on some music. Uh, and then, of course, we have a lot of people who are um, starting to volunteer. Uh, we had someone who uh, was very interested in uh, discussing uh, designing around people with disabilities. That was very helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, we have people who are sending us their art portfolios and asking how they can help. Um, so we're starting to get some volunteer staff, I guess. Um, so seven is, I guess, a good answer for now, and we definitely <laughs> plan to have more people. Se Seven-ish. Um, yes, uh, and as for the timeline, um, we don't want to give a solid date in case we, uh, in case development uh, changes, you know. Uh, but the hope is for a late 2018 holiday release. Oh wow. And that, that's um, that's sooner than I expected. Actually, I was I was thinking it would have tripped over into next year. What with the the sort of original idea having been generated so recently, um, that, that's actually quite impressive that you're you're aiming for the end of the year. Like that's uh, that's that's pretty cool. Well, as I said, uh, I guess I would expect it next year, but we are hoping to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. next year. But it's it's good to it's good to have a. Um, uh, a, a name for something that's uh, a little challenging, you know, to, uh, to aim for it to be sooner rather than later. I mean, that's that's pretty cool. Right. Uh, so, so you kind of touched on it in in the middle of uh, discussing around uh, your staffing and so forth, and it's um, talking about like the, the non-binary uh, ident identities that you have. Uh, related to the game, is that something that you've taken like a, a sort of level of almost consultation around in order to make sure that you get it right and to make sure that it's handled well? Uh, yes. Um, yeah, I just want to be upfront. Like, 
uh, I identify as a um, cishet uh, male Caucasian person. So obviously I won't have the um, all the knowledge that I need to have a proper voice right. for all the characters um, and their general story. So uh, I am trying to incorporate people who have more experience with those sort of voices. Um, and as people know, um, having non-binary representation is uh, something we're really focused on. Mm-hmm. So we're definitely including that sort of voice in the team. And, and, and it's, it's something that's incredibly rare as well. I mean, even if or any subjects in that sort of area, to be honest, like non-binary, <laughs> uh, different sexualities, like that, anything around that is either not mentioned at all or it's dealt with so sort of heavy-handedly or, or just like almost cheesily that it's sort of borderline offensive. So, um, it, you know, it's, it's, it's good to see that there's some research going on there and there's, there's um, a level of care being taken around it as opposed to just kind of going, oh, well, I'm sure they kind of roughly talk like this, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, um, I'm sure people want to know. Um, uh, hold on. Uh, we just got a message from Amy. She may be joining us. Um, uh, She's woken from sorry, her tomb. Uh, what was the question again? Sorry. <laughs> um, so, so the the sort of the way that it's being dealt with is a lot less sort of heavy-handed, and it's uh, it, it's been done with kind of knowledge knowledge around the the subject as opposed to to just kind of going, oh, I'm sure it's kind of close enough. Though those non-binary people just sound roughly like this, don't they? Like it's actually being kind of cared for and carefully looked at. Yes, um, so we touched upon it a little bit in the statement we released, um, but the office type isn't, wasn't designed as the, uh, the ultimate game about representation. We just mm-hmm. think that as a game, it should have proper representation. Right. Um, we're thinking that uh, hopefully uh, all future games will have proper representation, of course. Um, and we just want to do our part. Sure. So, so it's not like a, a main focus. It's just, uh, and it's the way that I feel it almost should be dealt with. It's just an additional detail about these people. It's, it's just another facet of their personality. Well, not their personality necessarily, but their being. You know who they are, as opposed to it being sort of front and center and all singing and dancing to, to kind of co- coin a slightly iffy phrase <laughs> uh, about it. Yes, definitely. And and uh, yeah, as I say, I think that's the right direction to, to be going in. Um, I, I if I I would very much appreciate um, it, it just being you know it's it's just another detail. It's not um, necessarily needing to be front and center, uh, which, yes. which I and find I'm, massively worthwhile. Yes, and of course um, we're not going to get it perfectly right. Um, we're hoping that we'll have. Um, the best representation we can, the most accurate representation. Um, but of course, there will be mistakes we make, um, and hopefully, uh, teams in the future will start um, picking that sort of thing up and building upon it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, hang on, I'm just, <laughs> just talking to, to Amy just to to see if she's actually genuinely alive. Um, <laughs> so, uh, that's actually a pertinent question I, I, I seem to have uh, uh, missed earlier. Is uh, do you guys have any um, previous pedigree? So, do, have you made any titles so far as a studio, or is this going to be the first um, the first step out into the foray as as a team? Uh, as a team, yes, uh, we are a very new studio. Uh, we started this up around the same time as the uh, the office site. Um, right. So we don't have any release titles that you could look up. Um, of course, each member of the team has worked on their own separate projects. Epsi and, of course, Jason um, working on the, on Dream Daddy. Um, me, I've been more focused on writing. Uh, I'm a novelist. Uh, I've been working on things like that, uh, screenplays and novels okay. that I've released. Um, and now I'm sort of bringing that back 
uh, those skills back into the game development industry. Yeah, I mean, it's a, a wealth of experience from various different quarters, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, that's what a team is all about. Yeah, uh, and that's and that's a fantastic thing, you know. That, uh, again, it's it's pulling all of those different types of experience and in different life experiences together into kind of one melting pot to um, to, to make to make something that kind of again covers all those bases and to um, provide sort of proper representation across the board rather than just a single mindset. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's and that's very important. Uh, so, so again, you, you're not. Miles and miles into the development so far, but we're we're a part way in. So, what what have been your major challenges so far going through? Like, are there are there things that you're just like, oh, you know, it's it's difficult to get around this already at this stage. Um, there are a few things. Uh, one of the things is just a general um, frustration with the timeline. Um, we have all of these designs in place. Um, and we're still not able to release a lot of information as quickly as people would like, as quickly as we would like. Mm -hmm. um, and that, of course, is due to cost. Um, we could speed up our production schedule much faster if we had um, more funding. Of course. Right. Um, so it's sort of like, <laughs> almost like uh, Christmas Eve, where you're uh, really excited for your presents, and then you wake up in the morning and uh, your parents tell me tell you you can have one per month, <laughs> and there's a little bit of uh, self disappointment there. Um, but we're really looking forward to the end product, so that excitement keeps us going. F for sure, and actually, to 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 kind of bring Jason Jason back in a little bit here as well. Um, so like, it, it, you know, it feels like. Um, almost Jack's baby, right? Like the, the 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 project. So, like, what what kind of drew you in in the first place and made you think, you know, what? Hell yeah, this is something I want to be involved in. Like, this is this is definitely like the next project along. As a matter of fact, uh, I came to figure out about it through a friend of mine who had seen something posted on a fan group on Facebook, and the word got passed to me. I looked into it. I kind of inquired as to just. What's going on here? I heard a, I heard something was happening over here. Um, is there anything you want to talk about about what's kind of coming in the future for this game? And just honestly, anytime there's somebody that's trying to start something new, trying to um, put their ideas out there, is something that I'll definitely go for. And since since Dream Daddy wasn't as much of an immersive experience as kind of sitting through with the production from the beginning mm -hmm. uh, i really i really enjoy being able to kind of sit in and support from the sidelines to just kind of be a part of this whole growth and eventual release of something that's so different and takes on so many different topics and points of discussion and i i don't know it just being able to see something so different is something that I think the game industry really needs. And so being mm -hmm. a part of something and being able to support something that's probably going to be uh, kind of a spearhead for future games that involve topics like this. It's, it's definitely a first and it's something that I'm enjoying so far. Cool. So it's a, you know, like a multi-layered thing, right? So you've got like the... The, the, the sort of more challenging topics that it's handling or well not quite the, the challenging topics but you know like the 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 more the, the paths less trodden I suppose is perhaps the, the yeah. better way of putting it um, and you've got a fact that you can really be involved and get in there at the ground level rather than sort of providing your part and and that's kind of it so like it's, uh, would you say that it's offering up the chance to just uh, offer more sort of personal reward to yourself as well um I guess it's it's more personal because, I mean, like I have an opportunity to actually talk with Jack here as opposed to when the opportunity, whenever I'm needed for, to just kind of sit down and record anything. Right. So it's it's more of an opportunity for me as an actor to kind of see things from the development perspective, which I didn't get to do last time. So this is definitely 
more personal for me to just kind of see what goes on as well as uh, provide whatever I can if need be. Gotcha. And have, have you found it a little bit eye-opening to just kind of the to see the other side of the coin and to kind of see how all of the back, the back end is starting to be woven together and so forth? Oh, definitely. It's it's far more stressful than I probably could have ever imagined. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, you guys are doing a great job so far for three months in and all the all of the work and all of the planning you have going on so far. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what you guys have further on down the road. Thank you. Well, there you go. So he's sharing the love. This is this is what it's all about, <laughs> yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, that's what dating simulators do. They bring people together. Exactly. Um, so uh, while we're talking kind of around the voice, the voice acting kind of uh, bits and pieces as well, don't you still have like an open call for, for people to audition for as well? Yes, uh, we're actually doing a sort of a different sort of casting call. Um, a lot of people were very excited about the idea of voicing characters in this game. Um, so we changed our idea from um, having people uh, specifically in our community of Chicago, and we opened it up to anyone worldwide. Uh, so we're currently doing a casting call over the next few months as we develop the characters. Um, if you'd like to be part of that, uh, dozens of people have already sent in auditions. Um, but if you'd like to be a part of it as well, um, send any sort of demo reel or even like a casual, um, hey, this is who I am, this is where I come from, that sort of thing. Just send a recording like that over to our email at heavythoughtstudios at gmail.com. Cool stuff. So even you, you humble viewers sitting at home can be involved. So <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's all yeah. about the voice. Um, there are so many uh, characters to choose from, 24, um, and we still have many of them to cast. Um, so someone with no experience at all could be the perfect voice we're looking for. Um, okay, yeah, and uh, I suppose as well, like it's... Uh, you you probably don't have too much of sort of a heavy spec for what people should be going for because so much of the stuff is um, still a little bit under wraps, right? So um, just kind of looking for the, the unique voices and the unique characters that are out there, right? Right. Um, of course, uh, you can't just say, here are all the characters. <laughs> um, let's see which one you want to try out for. It's, more, um, it's better for us if we just hear the voice you have and if it happens to fit one of the characters we've designed, then mm -hmm. we'll reach out to you and kind of follow up. Um, and it's uh, it's worth mentioning, I suppose, that if you are cast for a character that has not been revealed yet, we'll tell you about the character early. There you go. Inside track. <laughs> if, if you really deeply want to know more about the game, audition for one. <laughs> I mean, there uh, have so been several people so far, um, and there's a wide range. Anyone from uh, people who've never recorded anything in their life to people who have done commercials and stuff like that. Everybody's been applying. Um, and a lot of them, of all experience levels, have voices that would do very well in the game. Right, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, it, It's not something that you necessarily need to have some kind of formalized training for. Um, if you've got that kind of unique voice um, and you've got kind of the, the talent to inflect and so forth with, it's certainly worth auditioning for, I would imagine. Yes. I mean, of course, we'll have you follow a script and coach you through different things, but in general, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So, um,. I presume you guys are going to be aiming for like uh, initially to go towards a Steam launch uh, for this, but do you have any plans to go any sort of wider? Uh, like, are you tr trying to cover some more of the bases out there? Yes. Uh, so the initial plan is a Steam release on PC and Mac, um, and then uh, we do hope to bring it to console. Uh, of course, that's a longer process, but that is in the works. I, I kind of feel like um, the Switch is kind of the new the new golden boy to, to be aiming for all the time because like it, 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 the portability 
uh, whilst also actually having sort of the, a, a console to play around with as well and being able to put it up on the big screen. Um, and something yeah. about it is just it just suits so many different titles. So is that something in the in the crosshairs perhaps? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, you got to get on the same level as, level as Dark Souls, right? <laughs> or, or Skyrim, um, now available on the gas <laughs> pump of your choice. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in general, the Nintendo Switch, uh, of course, is a popular console, and I feel like it's sort of um, making its way into the mobile um, into the mobile industry, where yeah. it's really portable and. If people are looking for a portable version of this game, then Switch would be ideal. Uh, I saw somebody in the chat saying, um, "Will there be a Linux version?" Uh, we, I guess we we haven't considered um, too much about the development of that, um, but we'll do our best to include that as well. For for all four people on Linux, of which Lullers <laughs> I mean, is three of them. Statistically, there are fewer <laughs> uh, people on Linux, but if we can do it, we'll definitely try. It, it, it covers the bases, right? It makes it more accessible for more people. It, it makes sense too if it's at all possible. Mm -hmm. So, what stuff are you guys playing at the moment? Uh, because uh, again, like, you must be pulling influence in from from stuff that you're even playing at the moment, or are they things that you're doing to kind of take yourself away from the development process? Uh, right. Um, me personally, I don't have too much time to play games anymore, uh, which is kind of sad. Um, but I've played, of course, hundreds of games. Um, some of my favorites are probably Bloodborne, um, Overwatch is a big one right now, um, and then other dating sims like Catapult Boyfriend were big favorites of mine. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing the the latter are more more co sort of contrib contributory to the, <laughs> the game than the fir than the first couple, perhaps. Um, yes, uh, there's not a lot of Bloodborne. In no, no. Uh, I was going to say I didn't notice a stapler in the world of Bloodborne. I'll be terribly honest. You know. <laughs> and and Jason, you, have Jason? you been yeah. oh, oh, sorry. Go on, Jack. Uh, I was going to ask Jason his favorite games. Oh, okay. That was the same thing I was going to ask. Oh boy. <laughs> um. Yeah, I was going to say Overwatch too, because uh, with the whole league now, so it's it's. About that time to get back into playing Overwatch. Um, recently finished some, I think, the third Danganronpa. Persona oh, it's so good. Uh, if I'm going to be really just out there, Ace Attorney, always good. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very puzzle game based. Um, I'm not a very big first person shooter, but Overwatch is the one exception. But definitely, definitely down for trying new games. Uh, whenever I can find them and have the the money to afford them, <laughs> that's the, that's always the trouble, right? But um, uh, well, since we it's come up, um, favorite character out of D Danganronpa V3? Ooh, V3? Ooh, ooh, that's. I find I it hard to choose, man. Yeah, I think it's it, currently it's a tie between uh, Kaito and Kokichi. Oh, yeah, uh, Kokichi man, Kokichi's um, yeah. aces, uh, oh, like yeah. it just just oh, yeah. like the perfect sort of combination um, of of evil question mark maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, but oh god, yeah. I, I, again, like going to the podcast, like, I've spent so many weeks talking about that game that it's just unreal. Oh, it's so great. It's so great. <laughs> oh dear. Um, uh, but I, oh yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna carefully hold myself back from going into more, <laughs> uh, voice. this. Will turn into no, an I interview that, between you that. and I about how much we enjoyed that game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so something that some again someone in the the chat brought up as well. Uh, so I believe you know you're going kind of visual novel style with this, but it's going to be like partially voiced, right, rather than fully voice acted. Yes, um, we're sort of going with. Uh, short phrases and reactionary sounds mm -hmm. um, so not a ton of voice acting um, but it's the sort of thing that you'll be hearing several times throughout conversations with them that sort of thing 
Yeah, I mean, you see that quite commonly as well, I'd say, in, in certainly in like visual novel games and e even in some sort of traditional RPGs as well that aren't fully voice acted. They'll tend to have just kind of that, that short phrase or that, that reaction noise just to kind of add the extra sort of flavor uh, to the situation, right? And I think that's, that's the intent more than anything else, just to kind of add like a little bit of further intent on top of uh, what was being said. Yes, uh, so each of the characters have multiple voices, uh, multiple uh, poses and uh, facial expressions. Um, so pairing those with the voice acting um, will give sort of a uh, wider range for each character. Yeah, gotcha. Um, and yeah, like it's it's good to kind of get that that closer impression because the the thing that I always find is. Um, you'll you'll have an idea of how they sound in your head, but like you can never kind of transcribe that to exactly how the character acts and how that character is. So having that kind of little taste kind of more firmly impresses how they are in your mind. Is that is that kind of where you find it? The balance is. Yeah. So like uh, players will always have their idea of a character's voice, and that's important. Um, but having all these different voices um, for 24 different characters, I feel is important. So you can really cement the variety in there. Gotcha. And and uh, Jason, do you find that it's uh, difficult to kind of put put enough across about the character in, in the, those short snippets? Or, or do you find that that's enough to kind of convey some of the personality across well when it's put alongside like the, the, the written text of the, the visual novel aspect? Well, the most difficult part about doing just simple reactionary sounds is you can you can act them in so many different ways. Like a simple O oh, can be spoken maybe 20 times and it can sound different every single time. So for the developers, I think it's what do they want that specific sound to be like? And because of the variety, it's really hard to kind of narrow it down to that perfect sound. Mm -hmm. and so I, it, it, sorry, it could on. take, oh, it could take maybe hours to just try and get the one perfect one, and it, it doesn't really make it any easier if, uh, let's, well, because in the in the um, case of Dream Daddy, I had um, people on Skype kind of coaching me through it, so mm -hmm. they were watching me making strange sounds into a microphone. <laughs> so it's 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 a mixture of trying to get that sound out there while at the same time trying to visualize how the character would say it without putting the character into like a phrase which would be so much easier to say than just noises I <laughs> think. and it's harder when people are watching you too so <laughs> right yeah I mean, I, I get paranoid enough, like, if I'm live streaming and my other half is, like, lurking around the house or something and, like, comes up to, like, kind of, I don't know, like, do something upstairs in, like, my office space or whatever else, I get really, like, uh, self-conscious about, like, the different crap that I'm saying on stream. So, to just be making noises as well, I can only imagine it's even more jarring. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it is. It's definitely something you have to have the the courage and the confidence and not a lot of regret afterwards <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah it's it's great to it's it's great to know that i'm not alone in, <laughs> in oh, my definitely not. consciousness oh definitely not <laughs> um I, I, I suppose it's worth. Are you going to be working through any of the the audition stuff uh, along with Jack, or are you kind of uh, keep keeping back to to performing sort of your roles and not meddling with the others too much? Um, I won't do anything unless I'm asked at this point. <laughs> I, mean, um, I, I certainly want your input on a few things, um, and it's important oh, for you sure. to um, share your experience and sort of. Um, get to know the other members of the cast. So I'll definitely talk to you, with you about that more. All right, sounds good. There, there we go, a deal has been forged on this <laughs> Yeah, business, business is happening. <laughs> I think I just got you a promotion, I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> now head of voice talent. 
Uh, Marvellous. Actually, that's um, that's something well worth asking. Um, So out of the auditions that you've had so far, have there been any that have really kind of taken you by surprise or like really stood out and made you go, wow, this is like the perfect fit for this character? Um, There actually have been probably three so far that stood out as a high probability of being the voice we're looking for. Um, Of course, there may be others in the set. Um, We'll have to follow up with more people. But there was one in particular. um, Of course, I won't name them, but it was very surprising because um, they had no experience at all. um, And they were very... um, they didn't have very much confidence at all in their ability to voice act. Mm -hmm. But um, sort of their life experience that they uh, provided for us, uh, as well as their type of voice, really resonated with one of the characters coming up. Um, And I was very surprised by how much um, uh, personal details about your life can add to a character that is completely different from you. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, I suppose it's, it's great when they kind of come out of nowhere and surprise you like that, right? Yeah, definitely. That's pretty cool. And again, God, the nerdy dev questions, God. So, I, I know nothing about actually sort of what engines and so forth that uh, visual novel games are made on. I, I, they, I've I, I only kind of see them in like a split second glance as a game's opening. So, mm-hmm. so, so, what are you actually making this this on so far? Have you, have you got that in place? Yes, uh, the current plan is Unity right now. Okay. Um, it's in in our opinion better for two D games. Um, so yeah, that's the plan right now. I'm trying to think. Uh, Hatful Boyfriend. I swear it was in some kind of like bastardized uh, quick time player or something yeah. that <laughs> it was. There's isn't there one Ren Ren P or Ren Pi or something? In... I'm not sure. I think that's I, I I don't know. Some people use it for just kind of their own independent like short okay. games. I think. Oh, inter- yeah, interesting. And of course, you can make this sort of game in various different engines, uh, but Unity is the one we settled on. Yeah, fair fair enough. As I say, like this. It's, it's one of those things where I just don't kind of think about when it come, comes to this type of game because you don't need, like, the, the the really sort of super high-end polished graphics engines and so forth to be slotted in there because of uh, the, the nature of the art that's in there already. Uh, so I guess I guess it takes away, uh, takes away some of the limitation that you have there and you're kind of more free to choose things that are, are better for you to work with. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, it's definitely working with things from more experience. Yeah, and it make, makes your life easier and hopefully uh, eases the progression along a little bit more as well. Yes. Okay, so let, let's talk characters a little bit more because we, we've kind of touched on them here and there, uh, but we haven't really sort of delved in too much. So, um, so far, uh, what have we got revealed? Uh, what What is actually in the public domain so far? <laughs> Uh, well, mostly it's the first six characters, um, the pencil set and the pen set. Um, but uh, we're hoping that people have more questions here that we can answer. Um, and we can't reveal a lot of information, but um, there are details that we'd like to reveal here if people ask. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to get quizzing in the chat. Well, um, we haven't been looking at it too much. <laughs> I, I, I've been cherry picking a few out here and there uh, to to uh, throw across to you guys. Um, and someone in in the chat actually did uh, ask as well. Um, is there any idea of release date for more information on on more characters further down the line? Uh, yes. Well, that sort of thing is very much based on um, our funding at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, the current plan is you'll probably get a new set of characters every two weeks or so. Okay. Um, every uh, two weeks to a month for a new set of characters with the current um, current schedule. Um, but if we get more funding, 
you may be able to see all of the characters within three months. Right, yeah, I mean, obviously at Expedite you can uh, pull more people into in, into the fold to be able to develop a little bit faster and that sort of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Cool, um, and, and again, I, I know we're super early days and so forth, but uh, what what are your plans at release? Uh, are you going? To, uh, do you have any idea of kind of what pricing? How long the game's going to run for as well? Because I think I think that's always one of the things that uh, is kind of at the top of people's mind. As much as they might like the concept and they might like the the team and the characters and what whatever else, I always feel people are just super hung up on the sort of the 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 value for money aspect of it and as, as kind of basic level as that is uh, i think it's something that's well worth addressing so like wh where where do you kind of imagine it falling yes so um the the base price we're thinking of right now is 15 dollars, 14.99 cool um which is sort of standard for this type of game and this quality and this amount of content um and we are, um, I saw somebody else talking in the chat. Uh, I'm sorry, hold on, let me find it again. Um, if scrolled uh, off how, how, how do we get to that price? Uh, yeah, we just sort of looked at other uh, games in the genre and kind of compared prices. And we thought for um, the type of gameplay we're going for, $15 is a fair price. Because a big, um, a, a big selling point we think is just the re replayability factor here. Mm -hmm. um, because with 24 dateable characters and you can choose eight at a time, um, right. you can obviously play it at least three different times. Um, and each character has their own unique storyline as well. So um, there's a lot of ways you can replay it. We're, we currently don't know exactly how long the game is going to run, mm -hmm. but we know there you can replay it a lot. <laughs> okay, so so you're kind of looking at uh, like three major branches where I, I guess there's going to be a fair level of differentiation, and then within each of those three branches, the 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 extra eight branches of uh, each individual character and how that their <coughs> sets of experiences uh, differ as well. Yes, um, we very much want to focus on uh, differentiating the different characters within each set. Um, gotcha. And of course, each um, people have been noting how characters within each set may be sort of similar, both visually and within the same sort of hobby type. Uh, and that's for general design purposes, so you have consistency over several playthroughs. Mm -hmm. So... Um, each character is based off of a uh, specific office supply they're related to. Um, so as you're playing through the first time, you choose Cyril as the pencil representation. Um, and then the next playthrough, you choose um, Sylvia. And you still know that character represents the pencil. And you're not having to juggle 24 different types of characters. Got, gotcha, gotcha. So yeah, so you've got the like the, the sort of the the free type differences, and then and then from there it's down to the individual. Yes, like for example, um, the pencil set is all about comedy, but within comedy, um, uh, like Cyril likes uh, Cyril the male pen op uh, pencil option. Um, he likes uh, telling jokes and kind of goofing off, and he, um, he writes different scripts. Mm -hmm. uh, that's sort of his thing. Um, but Sylvia is a stand-up comic, um, and she sort of um, like goes up on stage and talks to a crowd. She's much more personable. Um, and then there's Syl, who's sort of the party animal, uh, goofy, uh, goofy person, who everyone wants to be around, uh, but gets a bit crazy sometimes. Um, and they like uh, creating different comedy books. Right. So it's sort of the same type of thing, but each character has different personalities within that set. Um, and 
different hobbies and where that kind of path takes them. So all, all variations upon a theme, basically. Yes. Cool, cool. I, I, I like the idea. I like it. Um, so... <laughs> In, inspired off of um, what we're doing right here, right now. Again, um, soldier coming in with the hot questions in the chat. I tell you, um, what, how how do you view stuff like this, like Twitch, YouTube, influencers in general? Uh, where where do you view those falling into your plans for the promotion of of this title? Because yeah, you know, so some people are all for it and really try and dive in. Some people are kind of a bit afraid to get involved with it too much. Like, where do you fall on the issue? Um, well, uh, me personally, I'm a big fan of um, YouTube and Twitch and that sort of thing. Um, and I know a lot of people are excited about this sort of thing. Uh, so I fully expect playthroughs of this to be on YouTube and Twitch and that sort of thing. Um, and we want to fully support that sort of um, that sort of experience. Because a lot of developers kind of try to shy away from that where, yes, it's advertising for your game but you're not letting other people play it you're just watching someone else play it mm -hmm. um but a lot of developers don't really realize that um i i viewed this sort of thing like you're sitting with a friend on the couch and right. they're really good at a game and you want to watch how they're enjoying it because you enjoy that um and plus uh if you watch a play this game, um, you can still like get the game yourself and experience a completely different um, playthrough. Absolutely. So, I think it's really important to support that sort of um, excitement around the game, um, both for the sake of uh, getting the word out there and to uh, help more people enjoy it if they can't buy it. Yeah, absolutely makes sense. And and do you see yourself doing more stuff like this as well, like uh, talk like as you're kind of leading up to the release? I mean, some some game developers actually do game development on stream, where they're actually putting together the game or b bits and pieces around it. Uh, you've got like sort of dev diaries, uh, stuff I like mean, that. Uh, like are those all things that you you're considering getting involved in. I mean, I've been considering that um, <laughs> a lot of uh, development of course, can't be revealed until um, it's more solid. Sure. Uh, until we have more things to show. Um, but I'd be definitely happy to do something like this again, talking about characters that have been released, details about them, that sort of thing. Um, and though, of course, this sort of stream that we're doing right now, um, we won't be able to cover all the questions. Uh, uh -huh. So if, you, if you're looking for that sort of thing, definitely let us know. Yeah, I, I, I say I, I've always... I've always taken joy from like seeing seeing behind the curtain to some degree. Like I think there's something to be said for kind of seeing how it all goes together. I mean, like I'm sure you guys have probably seen like how it's made or something like that on TV, right? Yeah. Where you, you go into like the crisp factory and then see how they make like a packet of Doritos, and it's just like 20 minutes where you just stood there slack jawed watching it. <laughs> um, I, I find a similar thing with like people developing games and even stuff like. Um, I don't know, like kind of a cobbled together compilation of some of the, the the voice acting or you know some of the writing session or like uh, I've known uh, a stand-up comedian to like sort of almost collaboratively write their stand-up script on 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 stream and like just kind of ask for like oh what well, is this punchline's kind of okay but like I feel like it could be a little bit better like maybe we can tweak it to be like the next sort of rung up of of where it could be and I, I i just find things like that really fascinating and i don't think i'm alone in that um i think a lot of people have that same kind of interest in just seeing like the the little behind the scenes snippets so it's something that i i'd, I'd love to see you do like if, if it was something that you could kind of angle it would be very interesting to see yes definitely um that sort of thing uh we'd love to do um for as long as people are interested in it uh, of course, the development process is interesting to us, um, sure. and there will be certain parts of it that are maybe not as exciting um, to some people more than others. Um, but I mean, if you start, for example, start streaming about development, someone will want to watch it, and I feel like even one person who's interested in that is valuable. 
who's, mm-hmm. uh, I don't mean to sound patronizing or anything, but every voice counts. Like, yeah. um, you may not agree on things. You may, um, may have different views on things on how, uh, something should be made, but knowing that that idea is out there, um, and people are thinking about that sort of thing, it kind of opens up, um, different possibilities for the production of the game. And, and I think looking at it from like a sort of a, a, a purely uh, kind of just just what's good for your game kind of uh, aspect, that one person has come to watch you, I don't know, doing a bit of coding or uh, doing a bit of writing or doing a bit of voice acting or whatever else. They, they've kind of got a level of investment in your game from that point. They're, they're, they may have made a suggestion that you went, oh, that's a good idea, actually. That that would be a better way of coding this this little block that's going to come up or whatever else. And and they're, they're invested. They're like, oh, damn, like I've actually added to to this 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 project now. Like it, it almost kind of makes them um, have or, uh, like feel like they possess a little part of that title, and it it helps them kind of want to push it out onto other people, you know. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, so yeah, it's, it's something I'd absolutely love uh, to to see you guys go, go along. So um, I, I guess watch this space, right? Or, or watch the Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, cool. Um, so I guess uh, one of the other things that we can move on to to take a little bit of a look at um, that your your fa- your fan base has kind of gone. A little mad uh, with with um, like creating fan art and so forth we, uh, around like all, all of your different characters that you've announced so far and you've showed off so far. Um, I, I feel like we should kind of delve into that. I mean, ha- what does that mean to you to have people kind of take your concept and go, "Yeah, I, I want to draw fan art for this. Like, I, I, w- I want to show off what I, I can do around this." Is that? It must be really uplifting for the project, right? Yes, it's, uh, it's really amazing. Um... Like, for example, uh, I personally am an awful drawer. I, I'm terrible. <laughs> um, I'm more of a writing down descriptions and sending that along to someone else. Mm-hmm. Um, but for someone, uh, let alone multiple people, to say, this is my favorite character, I'm going to spend the next two hours working on something to represent how I feel about this character. That's amazing. That's mm-hmm. so cool. Um there have been many different, uh, probably at least 15 different pieces of fan art for this game already. And there's only been six out of the 24 characters. Um, and there have been so many different styles um, and just different mediums and that sort of thing. And I was just really taken aback. I remember getting the first piece of fan art um, a few weeks ago. Um, someone had hand drawn Benny. Um, mm-hmm. And I was just shocked um, that um, I can understand if people are really excited about a game that had been released, that uh, has a big following, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But for your first, within your first 50 followers, somebody's like, I want to dedicate my time to creating this character in my own way. That really means a lot to us. Yeah, and I mean, that's... Um... That's always got to feel rewarding. That's always got to feel like you've um, you, you've struck the right chord. You know, you, you've you've definitely um, done something right in order to kind of win that sort of level of almost loyalty at at, at that point, right? I suppose um, um, it's sort of interesting because uh, we have never thought of it. I have, at least me, I've never thought of it that way. Um, of course, I take pride in the characters I design and the sort of game aspects that I designed, but I never felt that I earned anyone's loyalty because of it. Right. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I think that's, um, that's pretty cool, as I say. It shows, it shows that you're doing something right. Um, so you, you sent across a few of the um, uh, f- few pieces that some of the guys have done. Um, is there any particular character that you want to take a look at first here? And, and maybe we can talk around... Um, talk around that character a little bit and, and sort of how they fit into things? Uh, you can choose any of them. Uh, I know, I, I sent over a few pieces of fan art for us to take a look at. Uh, so who's first on my list? I've got, um, well, I've got Sylvia first on my on my list. Whoop. 
Uh, so I've got a, a piece from uh, Yup, I'm Peachy Keen up on screen at the moment. Yes, this was one of the very first pieces of fan art. Um, and I really enjoy it because this sort of um, take on Sylvia was really interesting, especially with the um, attention to the detail and the order, especially around it. Um, a big surprise for me was seeing how much people noticed this the design, like um, the green eyes matching the necklace um, mm -hmm. and the sort of color scheme of the game, the blue, yellow, um, pink. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I hadn't even considered that part as well. Yeah, that's uh, that is a, a, a attention to detail. And I think um, we actually had Jakob and Peachy Keen drop by at some point as well. I'm not sure uh, if they're still hanging yeah, out in the chat. I think they're in the chat. Um, and then we've got we've got another another Sylvia here as well. Um, that's, that's the one with the clear background, the two love hearts. It's not not only one attributed to it. I think that's. Uh, I believe the name is small down at the bottom. Um, if you make it bigger. Um, but this was one of the one of my favorites as well. Um, this really kind of captured the essence of who Sylvia is. Um, I think it's Gunslinger Ghoul is the name. Um, not sure if that's Tumblr or Twitter. Um, but just having this sort of goofy, like you can see how much the comedy aspect is sort of incorporated into this art. Right. Like it's, again, it's, it's, it's kind of taking the, the element of, of the character and kind of condensing it down into the art, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then, and then, and then the classic uh, Sylvia on a skateboard. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I'm not sure who did this one, but I saw it on Tumblr, and I had to include it. Um, <laughs> this just uh, was a really good representation of who Syl is. It's the <laughs> kind of I don't care uh, <laughs> um, party person. Um, and <laughs> I don't know what inspired this this particular piece of artwork, but I appreciate it. <laughs> um, what else have we got here? We got uh, I think Silver and Penny from Frozen Flights. Yes, Sylvia and Penelope. Um, I really like this art style. I believe the first one um, was a sketch that was um, colored digitally. And then the second one was um, just full digital art. Um, but I really like the incorporation of the actual object into the art, like Sylvia holding the pencil and Melvin mm -hmm. holding the pen. And you can really see the difference. Um, one, in the style, that this uh, the Frozen Flights is skilled enough to have these two different styles. Um, and that so much character is put into it, where Sylvia is obviously a bit more comedic and uh, Penelope is more refined. Again, the attention to detail is great. Yeah, and like you guys have got to remember, like this isn't, you know, the art that's just been uh, put out there by the game devs. These are people that have just gone, you know what? This game seems pretty cool. I'm gonna make art around it and actually like make incredibly cool stuff. Uh, it, it, it blows my mind because like that's more than I could ever do if I was trying to get paid for it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was trying to do it um, as a and, career. And also, uh, Jason, uh, do you have any thoughts on the art as well? Uh, I'm like one of those like supportive dad friends that kind of sits in the corner and just, <laughs> oh look. <laughs> Look, there's another one, and just kind of like going through and liking all of them because, like, oh, they're, it's it's getting big, it's getting like look at these people, they're liking the thing, and then I get really excited. So every time I see a piece of artwork, I'm probably going to like it just because it's something that kind of contributes to this growing thing. Yeah, I noticed you have been more active on Twitter about uh, all the artwork. And I, of course, I personally go through the hashtags related to it uh, and try to see new ones as often as possible. 
and I'm always shocked by that. Like this one, uh, Alarnia's work that just came up. Um, this is Benjamin and Sylvia, and I think this was also one of the first pieces of art. Um, one thing I was very surprised by, I believe this was done, each one was done in around two hours, because I remember... That's um, crazy. Two hours. <laughs> At least that's how I saw it, uh, that's how I saw it, where someone said there, uh, I believe Alarnia said that they were going to draw this, and then two hours later they had posted this. <laughs> Is that correct, Alarnia? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, we got Alarnia in the chat, so we can, we can get a, a, a straight answer, uh, straight up, really. Um, yeah, it's just incredible. Like, it's so good. And I just uh, it, like the impression I'm getting of Jason right now is that it, more or less every single one of these gets printed off and then puts uh, and then put on the fridge. Like, <laughs> you know, you know, I, I should actually start doing that. <laughs> I have a lot of space on my wall. I can fill. I can fill it with a lot of fan art. <laughs> But it, you know, yeah. just kind of it, it, in my mind, it was just like the dad thing of just going, "Yeah, very good kid. Yeah, up on the fridge." Like, <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm I'm everyone's fandom dad. <laughs> <coughs> and I've definitely been saving these pieces of art too. Um, I, I hope like we can do something with them later, some sort of like group collage or um, some sort of fan art book or something like that. That would be amazing. Well, I, I tell you what would be would be great. And again, this is where we've turned into a, a brainstorming session again. I feel, um, but like, even if you if you got permission, you could use these in the credits. Oh, that would be interesting. And just ha and just have these flash up as I don't know, being on the the notice board of, of the office or some such. Oh, that's a really cool idea. There you go. You found you found a way <laughs> to shoehorn them in. <laughs> Happy days. Um, and then what have we got here? We've got Cyril and Ben. Actually, it's more than Cyril. Yeah, Cyril and Ben. As well from, uh, ah, Whiskey Arts, who, again, I presume that, um, that's Whiskey to you is indeed Whiskey Arts. Yes. Um, these ones I was very surprised by. Um, just that my characters could be captured in such a different style. Mm -hmm. Um, and these looked like, I first thought they were, like, official stickers for the game. I was like, because <laughs> um, uh, I could definitely imagine, like, putting a computer. <laughs> well, especially, especially on, on the left as well. Like, it's the, the kind of, the, the almost sort of, uh, the, the, the shine that's on a few places really does make it look, like, perfectly made for a sticker, actually. Yeah, it's really stylized. Um, and I can imagine, uh, like, they're individual pieces of art. But they look like they interact with each other well. And mm. I can imagine mixing and matching 24 different types of these for all the characters. Yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> so just saying in the chat, it's just jealousy. Just just, just <laughs> filled to the brim with jealousy right now. <laughs> oh, oh, to be able to pick up one of the cast of the game and actually do anything with that actually that, that could again be slightly misconstrued uh, um <laughs> i mean if you have a pencil or a pen at home you already have them yeah well you no, this is it you, you two can family. own a member of the cast <laughs> <laughs> and then we got um a uh, couple of pieces of cereal uh, from uh, teeth cake which is pretty cool i must say there's almost, uh, almost a couple of different <laughs> styles, almost, as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm very surprised by the wide range of styles. Um, I believe this one on the right was done just last night. Um, and I really like this really casual approach that people are taking to Cyril. Um, mm -hmm. We're just like the... Uh, just the casual person who can take off his jacket and hang around and enjoy people's company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like it's just again like so so many different takes on uh, like obviously all the characters are different in their own ways, but so many different takes on the style of the game itself. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's just really interesting to see. I think we've got another of Cyril here as well from uh, T Queen, aka Kuroyuki G. Yes, this um, one was really impressive to me as well. We got this pretty recently. But again, the casual nature of Cyril, uh, it really captures personality really well. 
I'm just trying to see what what's on his head. Is it like a sort of daisy chain or something? Uh, yeah, I think it's a flower crown. <laughs> Actually, you guys don't use the term daisy chain, I don't think. In, <laughs> it, it, it sounds it, a lot. It sounds a lot more uh, official than flower crown. <laughs> Well, like if you can kind of like oh god how off track can you go but like you can kind of like split the stem of a daisy and then like weave another daisy into it and kind of turn them into a chain and we, we call them daisy chains okay. and you can make your nice flower crowns out of those um we're learning things yeah there you go it's, <laughs> it's a cultural experiment if anything oh boy. <laughs> um but yeah some like really fantastic art there so you know, it, it very much seems that like you guys have got a hell of a lot of support behind you um, uh, at this stage, at uh, this very early stage, um, which is absolutely fantastic to see. Um, so, what would you like to see from your fans in the future? Like, what would you like to? Uh, I presume you're going to enjoy them uh, producing more fan art down the line. But are there ways that they can? get involved, provide feedback to you, to give you more information about what they'd like to see, show you other cool things that they may have done? Uh, yes, uh, of course we do uh, want to see more fan art. Um, I wouldn't say go out of your way to dedicate your time to this, but if you feel like drawing something from the office type, definitely go ahead and do it. Um, we'd be happy to um, share it on our Twitter. Um, we go with the hashtag um, T.O.T. fan art. Uh-huh. Um, but for other things, um, I'm sure our fans will come up with things we haven't thought of. Um, but we're always open to feedback. Uh, feel free to email, email us with any information you might want to contribute. Um, if you want to be part of the process in some way, if you... Um, if you feel like you will be a good person for the team, that sort of thing. Uh, definitely uh, talk to us through email. Um, and oh, I I want to hear what your sort of take on what you think um, fans will be interested in. Yeah, I mean, I I do think there is something to be said for um, allowing them to get involved but you know to that to that point where it's still your project rather than just a crowdsource project um but you know there, there's all kinds of input there's so many skill bases out there and so many um like hyper hi, hyper talented people um because one of the other things that we haven't touched upon as well is like have you have you put much thought towards music and sound design or anything like that yes um well, right now I'm currently doing sound design, uh, but for music we have someone working on uh, some of the bass uh, themes and that sort of thing. Um, and then we may plan, once we have funding, to uh, actually search out through our fan base for oh. um, a sort of um, composer who would be then hired to produce the music for the game. Um, <laughs> which right now is kind of a lot at least one theme uh per character so uh, oh wow yeah it's a lot, a lot of work to be done um and yeah we're looking into that right now i mean that's more than a double album from from the outset right this uh there's quite a number of tra a number of tracks to be to be felt out for because that was one of the other things that sort of immediately sprung to mind is like there are there are a lot of fantastic music artists out there and you know some may very well be within the fandom so um yeah hopefully that's uh something that, that starts springing up for you as well um but uh, again so, someone you should make friends with uh in, in the chat mad fellows games um yeah i just noticed as well uh feel free to contact us um with any sort of um just like pointing to people who you think might be a good fit that would definitely be helpful but uh yes they're they're, they're f fantastic folks um well, yeah, kind of, maybe. If if I if I ever decide to stop uh, slagging them off, but you know, uh, that's, that's that's how I show love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, speaking of the chat, uh, I feel like we can take a few more questions from there. We haven't really been focusing on that too much. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, actually, one while while we wait for for a few people to ask in chat, one that actually popped up earlier again from Soldier, I'll, I'll um, I'll, I'll throw across to you guys, and that's um, for for those that are getting started in your respective fields, do you have any advice for them for like how far you've come so far, and like any sort of lessons that you've learned? Um, sure, uh, I can take um, writing and voice acting in particular. Um, Writing, I'd say, uh, the thing you hear a lot uh, is write every day, and I'm not one of those people who agrees with that, because, um, of course, writing takes practice, but if you're just trying to push through um, and you're not really feeling it, mm -hmm. then um, I feel like that doesn't help as much as um, finding inspiration elsewhere does. Um, just try to take every idea you think of and write it down, uh, even if it's just the smallest concept. Just make a list. Um, and if you are inspired, particularly inspired by something, don't be afraid to set something else aside um, and work on something else that you're really interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, that's actually where the idea of this came about, where I was so excited for it that I just stopped my other project temporarily. Um, and just focused on this. Um, and then in terms of voice acting, uh, I personally, um, I don't think I can give too much advice on the actual, um, I'm, I'm not a voice actor myself. I'm just mm -hmm. the director and kind of liaison with people who are interested in it. Um, if you're trying to get into any sort of voice acting, casting and directing, um, then you probably already have an ear for the sort of voices that do well. You probably watched a lot of shows. Uh, you're familiar with the types of voices that go with different types of characters. Um, mm -hmm. And definitely check in. If you're starting up a project, for example, just go for it and talk to them and sort of pitch your idea and say, like, this is, uh, this is what we're trying to make. Mm -hmm. um, we feel like you have a really great voice for this. Would you be interested? Um, and sometimes that's as easy, like that's as simple as it as it is. You just find people who might be interested in something they've never. Yeah, I mean, I, it, yeah, I, it, it's 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 taking chances and trying your best with stuff, right? Like that's um, that's all you can you can ever ask and all you can ever really do. Um, so so yeah, sounds solid. Uh, but, but Jason, from your side as well, like what? Well, what, what advice, what sage wisdom would you pass down? <laughs> well, honestly, um, I think starting wherever you can, whether it be just kind of sitting alone, making stupid noises to, <laughs> um, to if you have like original characters, giving those characters voices. Um, if you play Dungeons and Dragons, that's another opportunity to kind of give life to characters through voice there's there's never really a small opportunity to kind of get started because there are mm -hmm. plenty of opportunities to to kind of step out and try your hand at different things especially with voice acting because there are so many different people that are looking for voices for things whether it's school projects whether it's actual games whether it's commercials whether it's mm -hmm. this that and the third but uh if if it's something that you really want to do, then there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to. All right, and, and I guess that, that as well, like, you, that there's no harm in go it, like, it, it's, there's no sort of end of opportunity to to kind of get the first rung on the ladder because there's a lot of sort of entry level stuff uh, where you of can course, just kind yeah. of offer yourself up, right? Yeah, and the worst that somebody can ever say is no. Right. Because there's always more opportunities, there's always more drive to get to the next step wherever you're hoping to go. And just putting yourself out there and being able to say, this is something that I can do, this is something that I want to do. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you put that out there, then more people are going to come to you or they're going to look to you for, for voice opportunities, voice work, if you just kind of apply yourself there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I can I can I can fully see that. 
Um, so let's, let's have a look at some questions from the chat. Uh, <laughs> would sharpening a pencil be considered sensual? Mm. Uh, let's perhaps not go down that route. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, would it be many unromanceable characters? So outside of the the core cast of twenty four, they're going to be like many more sort of uh, peripheral characters as well. Um, well, so um, in other uh, dating sims, you probably noticed that outside the cast of the main dateable characters, there's uh, several supporting characters. Mm -hmm. um, since we have 24 dateable characters, which arguably is a lot, yeah, um, we're focusing more on developing those characters, and any supplementary characters are uh, background references and things like that. Right. Um, you may still see one or two um, come up in reference, um, but the game is really about the relationship between the player and the dateable character. Got it. Uh, yeah, it make, makes a lot of sense. Um, an an another thrilling dev question from Mad <laughs> 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 who, I, who I will not stop ragging on. Um, are you going to be localizing the game to many different regions, and would that be through like a, just a text-based or an audio-based thing? Um, well, hopefully we can... Uh, we do plan on localizing to different regions. I know Japanese and Chinese are big... Um, Big people, big uh, markets sort of for for market, visual novels, yes. right? Yeah, um, just games, games in general. Um, but that sort of stage will be more towards the end of production uh, if we have enough funding for that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but we'd like to eventually uh, translate, uh, at, at the very least, the text into different languages. Sure, I, 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 that makes sense. Um, because otherwise, you, you know, you're, you're missing out on on including more people in the experience, right? And that's and that's that's kind of the goal in the end, right? Yeah. Um. Uh. What What do you guys enjoy most about working in the games industry, or or on this project in particular? If you'd rather sort of scope it down a little bit more. Um. Well, me. Uh. I guess this kind of factors into who we are at Heavy Thought Studios. Um. I've always held the um, belief of it's just there's no feeling to describe what it's like to create something that you've been working on in your head for years mm -hmm. um, and just to build it up and then show it to someone and someone even one other person says this is the best thing I've ever seen this is so exciting I want to see more of this and just having that feeling of people uh, being able to communicate your ideas to people is what the studio is all about. Showing that we have a thought and it grows until it's heavy enough to kind of drop out into um, into the public eye. And I don't know, it's, it's just amazing to see. Well, it's personal reward, right? It's, it's that's your baby going out there, you know. <laughs> see, so, you know, that's my my thing that other people are enjoying. Like that's it's there's something to be said just for that, or just seeing the the the, the ripple that you make. I think is just really satisfying. Yes, that's definitely my favorite thing about it. And Jason, for yourself, um, because I'm fairly new to all of this on both sides, I'd say that. Uh, seeing how one small spark of an idea brings together multitudes of people and it can change lives it can influence people in ways that you probably could never even begin to think about mm -hmm. so starting to see this from the beginning it's it's really crazy to just see how things are starting to build and build and build and eventually when things kind of happen, when the game actually comes out, how many more people are going to kind of come together for that too? And it's probably gonna be incredibly big and I'm really looking forward to it. Awesome, awesome. And again, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of a variation on a theme, right? It's, it's just seeing that difference, that ripple passing through from from the impact that you've, you've helped make, right? And that's... Um, 
more, more more rewarding than like you know any financial aspect of it anything that can go onto your resume or whatever else it's just knowing that you've made that kind of level of difference on a project that has created such a difference in some in so many people um yes definitely uh so yeah pretty cool um i think e e even chat has run out of questions well i've um, seen a few i know uh somebody was um asking about dogs dogs are good and important i agree with that um will there be any dogs in the stadium sim um Honestly, we had not thought of that. The dogs are always a good addition, uh, and we'll look into that for sure. <laughs> and, uh, it's in an office supply. <laughs> then I again, know, a cat but... isn't a weapon, and 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 <laughs> there is a cat in, uh, in Boyfriend Dungeon from from that sort of outline thing on the trailer. So I, you know, I guess there's room, there's wiggle room there. Yeah, don't they have office dogs? Don't some offices have like office dogs? I mean, uh, I'm I'm hearing of that in the chat. I have not personally heard of that um, elsewhere, but um, there's certainly an opportunity for one of the characters to have a pet dog. I mean, I, I mean, sure. No, soldier. No, there is not going to be a gay roll of cello tape that is called some kind of bastardized version of my name. <laughs> <laughs> I give full license to my actual name, of course. Um, <laughs> um, so, and service dogs you guys need to chill on the dogs dogs are cute alright I get it I get it <laughs> Do dogs are hella cute and they're really cool but but perhaps perhaps you cannot order one from Staples it, it, I, I think that should probably be the bar like can you order one from Staples if if not no <laughs> um, <laughs> but <laughs> just whiskey just on on like this this uh, this animal uh, stint I think. Um, what about a goldfish? Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, we'll look into pets, okay? <laughs> we'll we'll do our best to incorporate pets. Yeah, I, th I think we're perhaps delving a little too deep. Um, yeah. So yeah, as I say, I, th I think we're we're mostly we're, for everything that I I really had in mind to ask you guys. Um, I think chat has. Um, Asked several questions that weren't even on any anyone's list as well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, I feel um, like we'd take a few more questions if people have them. I mean, people do have them, um, but by yeah. all means, we're not we're not doing uh, like forty. Hopefully, qu we'll, hopefully, we'll focus it in on game related and uh, dev team related questions. I, I, yeah, um, pref preferably. Um, you know yeah. that that would that would be grand. <laughs> Um, would you get tired of seeing fan art from the same person? Um, I don't think so. Because, um, of course, people have um, different styles, and uh, I personally wouldn't be tired of the same style, even. Um, because someone has... There's so many opportunities for all different characters, different scenarios they may be in, um, different expressions you could have. Um, so I personally wouldn't get tired of seeing fan art. Yeah, that's, that's fair, fair enough. I, I think, as I say, it's that kind of rewarding thing. It's not even. Uh, don't get me wrong. Like the, the fan art's cool and it's it's great and it's it's wonderful seeing the work that people that people have put into it. But just kind of the warm glow you get about someone going to that effort for your baby is it, just kind of the, the, the enough of a warm, warm, squishy glow for for it to matter re almost regardless of the other side. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so someone someone is asking like where you're going to be posting updates. Uh, so I presume you you know you're gonna you're gonna have your Twitter being updated continually. But um, uh, you got anywhere else like a YouTube or um, uh, not currently. So a lot of the updates, probably all of the updates, will mostly come from our Twitter uh, at Much Too Heavy Heavy Thought Studios on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, so, and any video updates and that sort of thing, um, we'll either um, create a, a specific YouTube channel for that, or just add it to the video function of Twitter. Cool, cool. So, I mean, that's that's kind of the hub for everything, anyway. Even if you do add the the website, the YouTube, the Twitch, whatever else, there'll still be updates running through there, anyway, that you'll be able to get all the latest news from as well. Yes. 
Uh, so, good times. Um, characters going to be around the same age? Or are they going to be a bit of variation? Uh, they're generally around the same age, mid-20. Um, but there are a few characters who uh, have varying ages. Um, and there are, I think, only one or two at the same age. Um, I think it's uh, people don't really pay attention to age too much. It's more of how the characters look, um, but there will definitely be noticeable differences. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, someone either looks young or someone looks the daddy type or or what have you, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's. Uh, I, I think I've been typecast as a daddy type for most of my adult life. Um, <laughs> Mostly against my will, but you know, you, you, you grow into things after a while. <laughs> um, um, what what does the future hold for you guys? I mean, I guess that might be a little bit hard to see at this point, right? Because you're still very much sort of knee deep in the current project. But I, I guess what what is the the, the end goal, the, the aspiration, the dream? So you, you've got this this project complete. And it's it's been an absolute roaring success, and it's wonderful. It's won all of the accolades. It's become game of the year on every single list, and everything's gone wonderfully well. What what's what's the dream from there? Is it to build the studio up to get ever larger? Is it to turn turn the office type into its own anime? I mean, what, what, what's what's the end goal? What's the dream? Uh, well, I wouldn't uh, give us all those accolades yet, um, but if we do. Um I uh, had the opportunity to have a bigger studio. We definitely want to. Uh, there are a lot of plans that works. I personally have dozens of ideas that I'm very much looking forward to creating. Um, and a lot of them not in this this sort of genre. Uh, mm -hmm. So I guess the best thing to say is just keep a lookout, I suppose. Yeah, well, see, see where it goes. But, you know, there must, there must be a dream. Like, you know, if the... If the if the you know the, the the funds are limitless and the office staff are, <laughs> are, are are limitless and endlessly talented, like what what would be the, the dream game? Like even if it's just something like absolute mad, like what what would be the dream one for you to make down the line? Uh, well, there's one I've been designing. I don't expect it to be made within the next thirty years, um, okay? Because of just the technological limitations, um, I want to eventually make. Uh, an MMORPG that people can just like add their whole like kind of live through where everyone is on the same server mm -hmm. um, so you have a million people all living in the same space uh, and just having that be able, being able to run um, and having a good enough system that people want to spend a lot of time in it i feel just would take a lot of time and a lot of money <laughs> so so the kind of the full sword art online kind of vibe right i guess so yeah um but, but, but perhaps not quite as nefarious <laughs> yeah that's a ways down the road though yeah but, but the, the ability for people to actually log out at will though i mean that, that that's quite important <laughs> yes <laughs> and and for you jason like um, obviously, you're still, as you say, sort of starting out. But do you plan to do like uh, a lot more voice acting in the industry? Do you plan on uh, taking your talents out to to a variety of different mediums? Like, what, what's the dream? Well, since since Dream Daddy, it's been kind of I don't know how to I would explain it. It's it's very new. I haven't done projects on it or anything since I was just kind of goofing around on YouTube as a wee child but <laughs> um, um, it's it's new to me since for for some people who know uh, I'm transgender and being able to voice act after going through hormones it's interesting to try and voice characters that you wouldn't think you'd be able to actively voice as opposed to how I sounded maybe four years ago mm -hmm. but I just want to be able to kind of go 
on into the future working on projects and kind of proving to people that no matter who they see themselves as, who they want to become in their lifetime, that it's possible to still kind of do the things that they enjoy mm -hmm. without having the whole, I, I wouldn't say stigma, but um, without the industry or whatever profession you want to get into telling you that you can't do something. That's, that's great. That's, that's a really sort of noble outlook onto it. Here's, here's me just going like, oh, well, I'd like a really nice, uh, a nice place to live and bags of cash <laughs> and whatever else. You're there like, you know, I'm full of moral fiber. I'm going to make you well, feel I mean, awful well, for I your mean, future dreams. <laughs> well, I mean, I also would like a roof over my head and like food <laughs> to eat, but you know. <laughs> But that's but a side I mean, note to helping the starving orphans and yeah, yeah okay, yeah, oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how it is. <laughs> um, well, no, that's that's cool though. I I I like that there there's more heart behind it than 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 what is j just kind of on paper, you know. Like it's 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 great to kind of have the soul in it as well. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Because I think too often, especially in, in the games industry, or actually any entertainment medium for that matter, really, um, there, there usually comes a stage where you kind of have to uh, agree... Uh, well, sorry, d make the choice between heart and head and, um, uh, you know, sort of seeking to pull the heart along alongside into the future is, um, is an ad admirable goal. Oh, well, thank you. Um, let's, hope that it, let's hope that it works out. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be there selling sound designers for cash. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's always an added bonus, though. <laughs> well, that's how you make your bonuses in this gaming industry. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, cool. Um, dun 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 dun. I, I think I think we skimmed through. The, the the stack. Uh, uh, w will you come back and visit us in the future? Actually, is is a pertinent question. Once we're perhaps sort of on the horizon of the release. Uh, I hope so. Um, I'd be glad to be on this again. Any sort of stream like this, um, I'm happy to pers participate in when I can. Um, and we may be able to add in new team members and that sort of thing uh, onto the um, onto a live stream. Um, yeah, we're definitely into that sort of thing. And this is where it becomes some like mad conference call with like the entire board <laughs> by the time we get to release. <laughs> um, Everyone just screaming over each other, trying. To yeah. you know. No, I want to watch this one. Don't show up. Um, the perfect live stream. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, you know, it, it, that's a niche that hasn't been filled yet. Don't tell too many people. <laughs> <laughs> we may have just stumbled across a, a unique prospect. <laughs> um, so no, no autograph, soldier. Cal cal calm down. No, no autograph. So you can have an autograph from me, but that's that's it. Um, yeah, I think I think we've exhausted the the many questions from chat. Um, uh, I have exhausted mine. Um, so is there anything else you guys want to put across? Um, anything else you want to fill in the chat about uh, before before we go our separate ways for the evening? Uh, or for the afternoon, you know. Just uh, keep an eye out for more information. Uh, we should have um, news about new characters, uh, probably more news about uh, gameplay and that sort of thing uh, in the near future. Um, and of course, please continue to give us feedback and ask more questions. And we'll try to answer as many as we can. Cool, cool, cool. Um, and uh, when can we start? When, when, when can we start supporting you guys? Because like uh, at the moment, you know, super early days, right? Like we've got um, a, a little ways to go until. Well, I say a little ways to go. We've got quite a way to go until the end of the year before we can actually <laughs> get into it. Um, is there any way uh, before because uh, you, you said like you're, you're looking at funding options and perhaps like kickstarters or possibly not uh, is there any way people can kind of get in at the ground level to, to, to get involved with you guys to to kind of keep you going I like, keep keep the lights on while you guys are still working hard and getting this um, getting this put into place right 
Yes. Um, so the we've talked about how we don't plan to do any sort of big fundraiser like Kickstarter or anything like that um, for a while at least. Um, and we may be getting funding from other sources uh, mm -hmm. such as um, other companies. But for now, um, we have a kind of set schedule that's kind of slow. So if anyone would like to participate, we'll be running a sort of initial fundraiser um, that I believe <clears throat> I sent a link to you. Um, and we just want to have the opportunity for people to help us out um, and increase our production schedule if, if you feel like you can. Um, so we're offering basically pre-orders of the game um, through a link in chat right now. And we'll mm -hmm. also post... <laughs> I uh, got a nice uh, overlay there. Um, <laughs> subtle, I felt. Really subtle. <laughs> oh, we got some of the comedy showing through. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm about to post about it on Twitter. Um, and we're sort of offering exclusive rewards for people who feel like they can contribute um, so early in our development. Uh, we're... Uh, for example, um, if you just buy it through Steam normally when it comes out, you Steam code and that's it. Um, but if you pre-order uh, around this time, while we're doing this early fundraiser, um, you'll get the Steam code when it comes out. And then another code for any console you want once we port it to consoles. Um, that sort of thing. Uh, if you are able to contribute uh, five more dollars uh, we're offering for people to join in in special uh, development panels uh, private Q&A events um, that sort of thing in the future mm -hmm. so if we ever go to a convention um, we may have a special room uh, set aside where people who contribute early can come join and meet us and talk with voice actors and things like that um, and then, if you are even more interested in uh, supporting the game, we're offering the chance to add an Easter egg of your own in the game. Um, mm -hmm. And that's that could be anything from naming a supporting character to having one of your own original characters hidden in the background of some scene, or um, things like that. So, if you want to uh, help um, speed up our process. We very much appreciate it. Uh, we totally understand if you can't. Um, and, of course, the game will still keep going even without uh, early support here. Yeah, and, and it, you know, it's just a, a, a way to help you guys along to, to get into the goal perhaps a little bit sooner or perhaps just a little bit more kind of comfortably without kind of the fear of the next uh, the next payment coming out. Um, but and in turn, you know, uh, adding a bit of extra reward to um, the, the 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 amount of input that those people can provide onto the onto the title. So if it's an option for you guys, definitely get in on, on the ground level. I mean, get get yourself um, a little bit more for your money. Maybe get the chance to throw in uh, something of your creation into into the game. That'd be pretty cool uh, to have a bit of a, a sort of namesake or a. A, a, you know, a cheeky office supply of your own lurking in the background. You never know. If you really deeply wanted a dog of some description in the game, <laughs> there could be at least like a little bobblehead or something on the desk, perhaps. You know, like there's options here. Uh, so, <laughs> um, yeah, so there's, there's a lot of options there. If it's something that you guys wanted to take a look at, the links there. Um, you'll be able to get a bit more info on your Twitter. Um, once you've put the 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 extra information out on there, which you're going to be doing a little later today, is that right? Uh, within the next few minutes, probably. Next few minutes, there you go. So, if you're watching this on like YouTube or something, uh, the information will already be there on their on their Twitter page, which will be linked below. Um, awesome. Well, um, I think that's everything that I wanted to cover off. Uh, I think that's everything that chat wanted to cover off. Uh, is that everything that you guys wanted to talk around as well? Uh, 
I think I'll just be waiting for more questions. Um, because so I, th I think I think chat may have died down on that front. I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I could be deeply, deeply surprised, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, chat will be uh, rallying itself uh, uh, as we speak. I don't know. Um, but I, I think I think I may have simmered down, other than just the occasional shouting about dogs, and uh, <laughs> and, and and so forth. Um, but, you know, I think I think it's good to. To, to keep it where where we've we've come uh, today, I think we've covered off a lot of information. There's a lot of information there uh, for people to really get kind of um, a, f a first hand look at the game, um, and we we know where to find you guys for any extra updates and, and bits and pieces like that as well. So uh, we'll be keeping a really close track on uh, how you guys are progressing and when we can kind of start getting to have a little bit of a peek and if there's a a cheeky little preview or demo or anything like that sneaking out in the in the next few months or so. I'm, I'm sure we'll be on that like uh, no one's business. <laughs> yes, definitely keep an eye out. Is that something that you're planning on doing actually? So you, are you going to be hoping to sort of sneak out a little demo or something like that in the near, in in the run up? Uh, well, we're definitely wor working on a demo. Um, it may not be a public release demo because it's. Uh, we're again, we're so early in production, right? Um, but we should see more details of that sort of thing in the next few months. Yeah, because I, I mean, it'd be something to be useful for you know people are potentially getting involved in the in the project as well. I'm sure so to see how it all kind of comes together. Um, well, what about um, like conventions and stuff? Again, I, I suppose that's going to all be subject to funding, but I, I presume you guys would love to take this to conventions and stuff as well, right? Yes, we've definitely made plans for that. For that, um, I I personally like uh, going to C2E2, the Chicago Comic and Entertainment Exhibition. Uh -huh. um, and it'd be really amazing to be there and meet people who are excited about the game. Uh, so definitely look forward to that sort of thing. Yeah, and you've got great initiatives like, uh, is it IndieCade that offer like free boost spaces to indie developers and stuff like that? I mean, hopefully there's um, a way for you to to get involved on, on something like that as well to really give you the chance to um, get yourself out there as much as possible. Um, yes, other, we'll definitely be using other resources like that. Uh, I mean, that should be pretty pretty helpful, right? Like, um, uh, especially, again, like while, while we're in the early days and whatever else. And and to be fair, like if you're look, aiming for end of year, then that's going to give you like sort of the prime time convention season uh, I'll have just passed. Um before before we get to the release so it could work out quite well in that way mm -hmm. um but awesome awesome right well i think we're gonna wrap up there um but it's been absolutely fantastic talking to you guys um i i like when when this was first sort of brought up to me i was like eh, it seems interesting but like i'm not kind of um uh, like the concept itself i wasn't like too sort of overwhelmed by and then after i've taken a little bit of a look into it and obviously had the the opportunity to talk to you guys here today it, it, it seems like there's something there's really something here there's something that's um um piqued my interest and it's definitely a, a title that i'm going to be sort of keeping up with um throughout the 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 course of production so um yeah thank you so much for taking the time to come and talk uh talk uh the office type today um and yeah, I say hopefully we can have you guys back a bit further down the line once um, once things are starting to sort of pull into place and uh, we're, we're starting to get a bit closer to the release. Um, I'd absolutely love to have you guys back along and we can um, talk around all of the changes and whether we got any dogs involved in the end. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, thank you very much for having us. Yeah, it's been, the opportunity. Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure, absolutely. Um, but yeah, that's it for today, guys. Um, Thanks so much for hanging out. Very much appreciate it. And um, keep the fan art coming in for these guys because I'm sure that's going to keep them encouraged and working away on their do on their job. Um, you know, if you can pre-order, stick in a pre-order for it as well. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll we'll keep up with you guys sometime sometime soon. So take care, folks, and um, have a good rest of your Saturday or whatever day it is if you're watching on YouTube for that matter. Have a good day. See you later, guys.